In this video, we begin our investigation of limits, looking at how they relate to tangent lines. Um, so there's two main reasons why we, we would study, why we started studying limits. Um, first is tangent lines, and the second one is rates of change. These have to be, these happen to be very much intertwined. Um, so we're going to start with tangent lines, and then we'll look at the rates of change, and then we'll formally define the limits and how we work with them. So in geometry, a, tan a line tangent to a circle is defined as a line that touches only at one point P. Oops. So let's say that here is my point P on the circle. So the tangent line would just kiss the circle at that point and then not touch anywhere else. So we want to uh, adapt this definition for a general curve. So what we normally say for a tangent line uh, at a point when x is equal to a, it should touch the curve at the point a f of a, so x value a, y value f of a, and resemble the graph of the function at nearby points. Okay. The reason why we want to use a tangent line is that we have no way to talk about the slope of a curve. We have the slope of a line, but when it's a curved function, we, we don't know how to talk about its steepness. Okay, so this is where the tangent line can help us. So because the tangent line is similar to the curve near to x equals a, um, we can use it to talk about what the slope of the curve is meaning in a meaningful way. Now, how do we find the equation for this tangent line? We definitely know one point it goes through because it passes through the point a f of a, which is on our graph on our curve and also on the tangent line. So for this example, maybe let's say that this is a f of a. So let's call that point P. Um, so what we need in order to find the equation of this line is another point or the slope. Okay, And we're going to use uh, limits and calculus to try and find the slope of the, the tangent line. So, so the, if we, this was our um, point that we were interested in, the tangent line I'm going to draw in purple okay, is going to just touch the graph near point P and then shoot off in a straight line away from it. Now notice here that on this left hand side, it looks like that our tangent line and our curve are going to meet somewhere. Okay, this is okay, um, so we just want it near to the point P to just touch and resemble. So if you look close to P, or close to x equals a, you'll see that the tangent line and the curve are very similar. Okay, and that's what we want. So this curve, this line I've just drawn is the tangent line. Okay, now the way that we're going to try to find the slope of this line is to look at a point near to uh, point P. So I'm going to draw up here. So let's say this is point Q. Okay, it's some distance from um, point P. So let's say that this distance here is some amount H. Okay, so then the new point is going to be at A plus H, and the Y value is going to be at F of A plus H. Okay, so that's our Q. And what we're going to do is look at what we call the secant line. So the secant line goes through two points on the curve. So it's a straight line through two points on the curve. So it will look something like this for this example. Okay, so that would be a secant line. Now, if Q is taken closer to P, so maybe I'll draw one more. So let's say that this is my other, this is a new Q1. Notice that my secant line looks more similar to my tangent line. Okay, it turns out that as the Qs get close to the point P, or to say that another way, as H um, gets small, 
Okay, so if h is a small value, then these, close, these points are closer together. Um, the secant lines will actually approach the tangent line. Now on the secant line, because we know two points on the line, or this point here, um, we can find the slope of that line. So to illustrate this idea, um, let's just first go to this, um, well, here we go, this link here. Now this is a different graph, so my graph here is h squared, or x squared, sorry. Um, but you see the green point, I wonder if I, no, I can't draw on it. Um, the green point is the point that I want the tangent line at, and the, the blue line here is the tangent line. Now what I'm going to do is move this Q point closer. Let's maybe zoom in a bit. So as I move this other point closer to P, Notice that my purple secant line gets closer and closer to my blue tangent line. Okay, so as the distance between these two points decreases, these lines actually resemble each other. Okay, so because the lines resemble each other, their slopes are going to resemble each other, more importantly. So what we're going to do is use the slope of this line, the purple line, that we can compute and try to see what happens as the distance gets small, okay, between the two points. So that's the idea. Let's go back to the notes here. So if I want the slope of the secant line, so between points P and point Q, um, remember that, well, I'm going to call it M sec, so we know it's the secant line. So remember the formula is the rise over the run, so the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. So let's call the points in P, x1, y1, the coordinates, and Q can be x2, y2. So then it's going to be f of a plus h minus f of a over a plus h minus a. Okay, now notice we can simplify the bottom a bit, so those a's will cancel out. So this secant slope looks like f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Okay, so that's the secant slope for any points at p and q. So we want to take q closer together, so that's what we used in this um, image that we looked at. Um, so... What we're going to do is we're going to let the, the h value sort of approach 0. Okay, so it's not going to be 0 because we don't know the slope of the tangent line. So if it was 0, then the secant line is the tangent line. But as it gets close to 0, we still have a secant line, and the secant line is going to look more and more like the tangent line. So using limit notation... Um, and the, these ideas that we just talked about, we can um, better talk about the tangent line. So the tangent line of the graph um, y equals f of x at this special point, so this is our p point, a f of a, is the line through that point, and the slope it's going to have is, so this is the notation we're going to use, so I'm going to read it out. Okay, so it's the limit as h approaches 0 of the secant slope, so of m sec. So maybe let's just write this. So it's the limit as h approaches 0 of m sec. So the slope of the secant line. So I'm relying on your intuition here in hopes that you understand what I mean. So let me just rewrite this. So it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of our m sec, which we just said was f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So that's going to be our um, slope for our tangent line. So 
what we're going to try and talk about is how we might go about thinking about this. What is this limit doing? What does it mean? Um, now, it's this provided the limit exists. Okay, if the, there are times when the limit doesn't exist, which we're going to talk about later. Um, and in that case, there would be no tangent line at that point. So let's do an example. Try and come to terms with all this. So let's consider the function f of x is x squared. So that's the one we saw in the animation we looked at. So let's first, so let's just draw it here. Okay, so we hopefully know what the graph of x squared um, looks like. And in fact, at 3, we're at 9, so it's going to be up there. Okay, so we have this parabola. Okay. Um, and we first want a secant line from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So it's going to be that we want the equation of this red line. So it's going to look something like that. So our points we know are 1, 1 and 3, 9. So remember these y values, this is 3 squared. And the one is one squared, so that we're on the the uh, the curve x squared. So we first want to find the slope of this uh, secant line. So it's going to be nine minus one over three minus one, which is eight over two, which is four. So it has a slope of four. So it should be, and it's pretty close. If I go up 4 from this point and over 1, I should hit the line again. And yeah, it's pretty good. So then I would go up 4 and over 1, and that's how I get to there. So the slope of 4. And we have points uh, 1, 1 and 3, 9. Okay, we can use either of these to find the equation. I'm going to use 3, 9 um, for no reason at all. So I'm going to use the point-slope form of the equation and say that my equation should be y minus 9 is equal to 4x minus 3. And if I want this in slope-intercept form, I just solve for y. So I'm going to expand the 4 through and then add 9 to both sides. So in slope-intercept form, my equation would be 4x minus 3. Okay, so this is in slope-intercept form, which we didn't need to get to, but is a nice form to, to use. So that's a secant line. Now, what would be the slope of the secant line if we still wanted to go through our point 1, 1, but now we're going to go through some general point Q that's some distance away. Okay, so let's just try and draw. Q would be, I don't know, somewhere here maybe. So it's 1 plus H. So this distance between 1 and that point is H. Okay, and then the Y value of that. Oh, I don't want to be on the line though, sorry. Um, So I'd want my point to be on the curve, so down here. Um, so then my y value would be somewhere here, so it would be f of 1 plus h. Okay, so we want the slope of the secant that goes through those two points. So where q is a bit more hidden, it's not an exact, an exact spot. So we do it the same way, so I'm still going to call this x1, y1. And here, 1 plus h is going to be x2. 1 plus h squared is going to be y2. So the secant slope here is going to be y2, so 1 plus h, all squared, minus y1, which is 1, over x2, so 1 plus h, minus 1. And then I'm going to try to simplify this. So I need to expand 1 plus h all squared. So that's going to be 1 plus h plus h plus h squared minus 1. 
10 on the bottom, I'm going to have 1 plus h minus 1. So we see some cancelling happening. So these 1s are both going to go away. And also these two h's are like terms, so I can put them together. So this is going to be 2h plus h squared all over h. Now I have a common factor on the top, so I can factor out h. I'm going to have 2 plus h left over. And then I have h on the bottom. And now I can cancel those h's. So in the most simplified form, m, the slope of the secant is 2 plus h. Okay, so if I pick an h, so for instance, in a, we had... 1 plus h was equal to 3, so that means that h was 2, okay? So m sec, using this formula, would have been 2 plus 2, which is 4, which is the same as what we got in a. Okay, so it works for that. Now let's try to see what these slopes do as h gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so we're going to do a few different values, small values of h. So if h is 0.1, then m, the slope of the secant, we can just use the formula above, is going to be 2 plus 0.1. So it's going to be 2.1. Okay. If h is 0 0.01, then the slope of our secant is going to be 2 plus 0 0.01, which is 2.01. If our h is 0 0.001, the slope is going to be 2 plus 0 0.001, which is 2.001. So it seems as h gets smaller, so let's just make a note here, it seems as h gets smaller that the slope of the secant gets closer to 2, right? These numbers, as we get smaller, as h gets smaller, we're getting closer and closer to the number 2. We just keep adding more decimal places. Okay, this is the idea behind the limit. Okay, so because of this, okay, so this, this idea here is why, so maybe I'll say this in red, so, um, so if we wanted the equation for the tangent line at x equals 1, um, so we know that we have the point 1, 1, that the, it goes through, but the slope, so I'm going to write m tangent, remember we said was equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of m sec. Okay, now because of our reasoning up above, it seems like that m sec seems like that m sec approaches 2, that's what we use the arrow for, so approaches, as h approaches 0. Okay, so it turns out that this limit is actually equal to 2. So that's the idea behind the limit, is what does the value here approach as this happens, so as h gets close to 0. So that's sort of the intuitive definition. Again, we're going to be working with these a lot, so we're going to um, have some techniques for solving these. Um, but they're very similar to what we did in part B, okay, with a general point and then reducing to help us figure out what it approaches. So now we have a point and the slope. So the equation is um, y minus 1 is 2 times x minus 1. This is in point-slope form. Um, so again, this would be good because it doesn't say how you need to leave your equation. So you could stop here. But if you want it in slope-intercept form, just uh, simplify and solve for y. So I expanded the 2 through. And then I want to add 1 to both sides. So y is going to be 2x minus 1. So that would be the equation for our tangent line when x is equal to 1. Okay, so it's important that we were at 1 
and we use things with the p, so everything we did was for p at the point when x is 1. Okay, so um, this is how uh, the limits are involved in finding the tangent line equations. So we can find the secant line equation, the limit of the slope for the secant lines, and then we use this limiting idea of the secant lines as our q point gets close to p uh, to 